Howdy howdy, this is Tony Potter, and this is our deliverable number one for CS6460, Educational Technology. And what I'm going to be doing in this program is talking about the uh, tool that I'm be building, a uh, program called jCloud. Uh, jCloud is a combination of several things. We'll be actually running Java, writing, coding, compiling, and executing Java console programs in the browser uh, through Georgia Tech, and using the Google Cloud as our file storage and retrieval. And if you want to follow along all the things we're doing here, this is the website we're at, ehoth.net slash deliverable1. So um, basically what we're looking at is we are trying to design a web page that will both read and write, source to Google Drive, compile and execute Java code, save output as plain text to a Google Drive, and also share either the source or the output uh, with another drive. Uh, this could be either a teacher if you're talking about a classroom setting or you could talk about uh, where you have a group programming session where you can uh, consolidate your work with uh, your fellow workers. So um, first thing I want to talk about is the idea of designing a page. Um, so this is the very first thing that we're looking at. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and show you where we're at right now. Um, we've designed a page here and we have three basic fields here. We've got a field here where the user can type in their file name, a field where the user will be able to type in source code, and this field down here will contain all of the output for the program. Um, so these are the different areas. We also have several buttons here that do the, act, the actions that we spoke about earlier. We've got compile and run, which deals with the code we have up here. And then we have uh, file stuff. This is the this actually interacts with the Google Drive API. So we're talking about being able to open. We can save the source as a file, save the output as a file, share the source with another user, share the output with another user. And when we're doing this, our inspiration actually comes from two websites. Uh, one is Sculpt, which I've actually used in my classroom to teach Java. I mean, not Java, to teach uh, Python. Um, and what's really nice about the Sculpt website is that it allows you to do not only console programs using print, but it also allows you to do graphics. Uh, I'm not sure that we're going to get to that point where we'll be able to uh, have both uh, console and applets in our program or GUI programs. It'll probably just be console within the nine week scope of the course. Uh, the other thing we have is Code Your Cloud, which allows you to type code. It's a code editor, uh, and it uses Google Drive. The thing about the code editor though, it does not allow you to compile, it does not allow you to execute the code. As a matter of fact, I have not been able to find a site that allows you to do all of those things, uh, compiling and execute Java code under Google Drive, being able to save your file or save your output. And so what I'm hoping to do is to take care of that with uh, this tool that we're designing. So we're going to be looking at reading and writing source code to Google Drive and also being able to save the output as plain text to Google Drive. And we're going to be doing this using the Google API. So in the first week of the program, I actually had to go to the developer's console and get credentials. Uh, I had to be able to get IDs so that I could access a individual's Google Drive files, being able to read and write to their Google Drive from my program. And then Google has a fairly robust uh, API where we can actually go in here and take care of opening files. We'll even be able to take care of sharing files, which is near the end of the scope of this program. So if I want to take a look at what we've done so far, um, as I mentioned, we had to get our, uh, we had to get our credentials and there was the Java quick start, which we started to do in um, week one. The idea behind the Java Quick Start is that we would actually write a Java console program uh, using this program called Gradle, which allows us to interact with the uh, with Google's API. The issue with this is that they wanted to use Gradle 2.3. Um, I'm using I'm using Ubuntu 14.04 Long Term Service. Uh, the highest version that they've been able to get up to is 1.9. So when I downloaded the latest source, the latest source is Gradle 2.11, which doesn't work with this code. So using the code that they have here, I was not able to get, um, was not able to get it to execute the way that it was. But the whole idea here is this is just a proof of concept to show that I could work with the APIs. And our actual implementation is going to be using JavaScript, which is a completely different language from Java. Um, 
so what I did is um, they actually have a quick start for JavaScript, which we did, uh, allowing us to get into the API and search for files. The particular files that we're looking for here are going to be dealing with graphics files. So I've got an example here. This is in our ehoth.net domain. I'm going to go ahead and refresh it. And the first thing that happens is that it will pop up with, if we can get it to pop up here. Let me try something a little different. So you're going to see the request for permission. It wants to know if I want to view and manage my uh, files in the Google Drive. I'll go ahead and click Allow. And then it'll give me a file selector. Now the only graphics file I have is for a pig, for a lab that I do with my students where they have to catch a stuck pig. So we can actually select a file. And this was really our proof of concept here. What Google Drive does is it gives us a unique identifier for each file. And it's actually through this unique identifier that we're going to be able to retrieve and save data to Google Drive. So we're not going to have to worry about traversing through directories in a file system. Uh, we will have to worry about that when we're writing to the file system just because we're going to be creating a new file. But if we want to find an existing file and either replace its contents or load its contents, we should be able to just get the uh, unique uh, file ID, the uh, unique user ID from that file. And so this was actually our proof of uh, our proof of concept technique where we could actually access the drive from our domain. So I'll go over here and um, show you the file that we're dealing here. Uh, so this is test get UUID. So here's the file that we're dealing with. Um, so it is just an HTML file uh, with a JavaScript. I've got a developer key, I've got a client ID, uh, I've got my app ID, which happens to be the prefix of my client ID. Um, and what this does is this creates a picker object. And the idea of the picker object is that it's going to allow us to pick from a selection of files. Uh, the mind types is what actually sets the file. And so if I had more graphics in here, notice I've got P, uh, portable network graphics, JPEGs, um, I'd be able to select any of those types. I could change this to image slash text, or I could change this to application, uh, word application, uh, to load different types of files. And of course, we're going to be particularly interested in Java applications. So I'm going to need to set this to the MIME type of Java. So that's where we're headed. This is what we've done so far for our proof of concept. So I'll go ahead and hit OK here. We'll go back to um, this step here. Um, keep in mind that we also will be looking to compile and execute Java code. This won't actually happen until deliverable 3. Uh, but what we're going to do is have that done and then of course share source or output with another drive This is something we're looking at at deliverable for uh, along with some uh, Some testing of our code So going back to what we have done before um, Notice that they have API's for downloading files getting the data from files um, Opening the files creating files and sharing files so we're going to be implementing all of those in our jcloud apparatus so at this moment, very few of these buttons actually do anything more than just identify that they've been clicked. And so I've got the output for all of these buttons down here in this output window. So clicking compile allows me to know that the compile button has been clicked, run, uh, save source, save output, share source, share output, and I can clear the output. Uh, the only one that I've done any real work on is this open, which is going to start up one of these pickers again but notice that it's leading us with text files. And so I'll scroll down here to some of the Java files that I have in my folder. Uh, actually, I need to go to uh, anything containing Java so I can see maze Java, floodfill.java. Um, the issue is that I have not gotten it to actually implement this. And part of the problem is that this is not a MIME type that Google Drive is familiar with. So it doesn't know what to do this, how to treat this either as text or treat it as data. Um, so that's something that I'm going to have to implement in. So at this point, let me uh, go to my uh, index file so I can show you what we've got going so far with this. Um, so that was our UID. And then this is our index file. So we've got some 
cascading style sheets just to give us the format of this. Uh, notice the format of this is very similar to the um, very similar to the sculpt program that we were working with before. Um, I am using uh, I am looking at Code Mirror as something for the uh, text box here because one of the things that happens is if I was to do Control S, Control S actually goes to the browser's save. And I would like to capture that and actually have that go to a safe source. Or if I do, uh, if I do a tab, tab should have some type of indentation. Instead, it just goes to the next field in the web page. And this codemirror.net is actually an open source uh, text editor, which allows us to take the existing text editor that we have and kind of capture those key presses so that they perform the tasks that we want. And then, of course, I've got the, the the Google Drive APIs here that I'm working with. But we'll scroll down a bit and show you that the um, the buttons that we've got. This right here is the button area. And so all I'm doing is I'm just declaring a variable called whatever that button is called and changing the uh, inner HTML for that uh, and changing the inner HTML to that text. Or for the clear button, all I do is I just change the inner HTML to an empty string. Um, for the open, notice here is I actually call on the load picker method. That was the one that brings that screen up that allows us to choose a file. And I'm trying to get it so that it will actually go to that particular file and download it through the Google API. I'm not having success with that right now, but I am still working on that. But that's where we're at at this point. Um, if I scroll up a bit, you can see these text areas up here. This is the text area. And I've got it to boot up with a Hello World. So it's going to start off with the file named Hello World. It's going to start off with the code because I put the code right here. And of course, the, the formatting is a little awkward in this just because I want to make sure there are no leading spaces or trailing spaces in my code. I'm afraid that might confuse the user. But what would happen is whenever this open comes up, this file name would change to the file name that was chosen. The text in here would change to the text of the source code. And then we, they would be able to compile or run the code as needed. Um, and then, of course, we would have the save output would parse this file name to be hello world.txt uh, or OUT if they wanted that formatted that way. I haven't decided yet. And share source and share output would do the same thing, create those files on the user's Google Drive, but would also allow them to share uh, via email address. So they'd be able to type in a user's email address in some new uh, message box that would pop up and uh, share that file. So that's where we're at uh, with our current progress. This is two weeks in, um, hoping to have a lot more functionality implemented later on. So once again, this is Tony Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.